In this video, we're going to talk about different cycles in our ecosystem. So the nitrogen cycle, the water cycle, and the carbon cycle. And basically, we need to know how these materials that are essential to life on Earth, how are they recycled? Because we need nitrogen for our amino acids and our DNA. We need water to function, especially plants to do photosynthesis. And carbon is pretty much in everything that we have in all of our body chemicals. So how do these things recycle in in and of itself so we never run out of any of them? Before we can talk about all the cycles, we need to know a few vocabulary terms. Abiotic factors are things that are not living. Okay, biotic factors are part of the ecosystem that are living. So an example of an abiotic factor would be things like water, the atmosphere, things like that. Uh, biotic factors would be things like, well, we know that a mouse will eat grass. So grass uh, or a mouse, I should say, would be part of the, a biotic factor in the environment for grass. Producers are things that pretty much go through photosynthesis, but they take energy from the sun and convert that into chemical energy. Or they take energy from some other source and provide energy for everything else in an environment. A decomposer will take big, huge carbon molecules and break them down, or big, huge nitrogen molecules, these big, big, big molecules, and break them down into small molecules. And then fixers are usually things that are going to take something like carbon dioxide or nitrogen, N2 gas, and fix it or bond or chemically react these things to a different carbon molecule. So now that we got the vocab, let's move on to some cycles. The first cycle that I want to talk about is the water cycle. And a lot of us have heard about the water cycle before where we have our clouds and it'll snow or rain onto the mountains and then from the mountains it'll go down into streams and rivers and eventually make it into ponds and lakes. And then we have, so this process would be precipitation and then we'd have the sun shining down and heating up these bodies of water, whether it's a pond or a lake or an ocean. And then we'd have the water evaporate back up into the atmosphere until enough clouds collected for precipitation to happen again. And most people think that, well, there's the water cycle. And while that's true, from a biological sense, we need to know a few more things about it. Let's have our mountains in here, okay? And we definitely are going to have our clouds that are going to come down and have water come from the atmosphere down here. And again, that was precipitation. And we definitely have our streams and lakes and ponds and rivers and all that stuff. And we are going to have water be evaporated back into the atmosphere. Okay, All of this stuff that we talked about right now is abiotic. But how does water go from the abiotic parts to the biotic parts? Well, we also... In our land here, we're also probably going to have some trees. And we're probably going to have some sort of animals. And again, I uh, also majored in art, as you can tell, by, I don't know, that looks like a bug, but I was trying to make it look like some sort of animal that has antlers on it. Didn't do a very good job. But we also know that water from these streams and lakes water is going to go to these plants and animals. We're going to lose part of that. Specifically, as water gets sucked in from the ground and the roots to plants, the plants are going to use that water in photosynthesis. Okay. We also know that all these animals are going to go through cellular respiration 
and eventually they will also urinate to some degree and return water to the abiotic parts of the environment. So photosynthesis would be a way for water to go from the abiotic parts of the ecosystem to the biotic parts, the living plants. Uh, another way for the plants or for water to go from the biotic parts to the abiotic would be any water that's lost from the plants to the environment. It's kind of like evaporation, but it's specifically for plants, and that's called transpiration. And then obviously what we said here would be another example where the products, leftover products of cellular respiration or when an animal urinates back into the environment going from biotic parts to abiotic parts. So as you can see, the water cycle is still the water cycle. We just need to have um, a different way to include the biotic parts into our water cycle, especially as it pertains to photosynthesis and cellular respiration. The next cycle is the carbon cycle. And for whatever reason in the carbon cycle, a lot of people get fixated on this part right here, the human emissions, where basically you're taking things like gas that makes your car go or other fossil fuels, and you're burning them in combustion, which releases carbon dioxide. And that definitely is the case. That does happen. But it's not a huge, huge thing. Um, photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is going to go in to plants so plants can go through photosynthesis and make glucose. Well, these plants and other animals, sorry, and then an animal will eat the plants and other animals will eat those animals. So things get passed on from one organism to another. But then the other thing about this is eventually these organisms are going to die. So they're going to go into the ground and we need something to break them down in the ground and release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. You're going to see a whole bunch of things about photosynthesis and decomposition and cellular respiration, and that's really our big picture. So we're not going to use this whole big thing. Let's just draw it out. So we're going to start with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And we know that through the process of photosynthesis, Okay, plants are going to, and other things that do photosynthesis, are going to take the carbon dioxide and essentially make glucose. Now, in that glucose, there's also going to release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere through the process of cellular respiration. So right then and there, we went from a abiotic in the atmosphere through photosynthesis to the, ab or to the biotic parts of an ecosystem. We went from the non-living atmosphere to the living plants through photosynthesis. We also went from the biotic part in plants and photosynthesis to the abiotic parts into the atmosphere through cellular respiration. But the other piece is that different animals are going to eat these plants. So we have some consumption. And in that consumption by animals, and even the plants themselves are going to do their own metabolic pathways. They're going to have their own metabolism. But they're going to make complex organic compounds. And that's just a fancy term for a whole bunch of molecules that have lots of carbon and lots of hydrogen in them. Things like DNA, proteins, lipids, all that car complex carbohydrates, lots and lots of things. Everything that makes up your body is going to be highly, uh, lots and lots of organic compounds. Well, the thing is, is if all the carbon is stuck in these complex organic compounds, it's no longer a cycle anymore. Uh, everything, all the carbon is going to be stuck, which means we don't have any carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, which means there's no glucose, which means none of these guys can live. Life would be over. So somehow we need a way to have all the carbon from this complex organic compounds to come back to the atmosphere 
as carbon dioxide. And this is where our decomposers come in. Our decomposers, things like fungus and bacteria, will take these complex organic compounds and start breaking up these huge carbon and hydrogen molecules into individual carbon dioxide molecules and release them back into the atmosphere. That's another way for the a or the biotic parts of the carbon to be released back to the abiotic atmosphere. Next, we have the nitrogen cycle. And this is a common diagram that we see a lot with the, with the nitrogen cycle. And it talks about all the main parts of the nitrogen cycle. It has assimilation, which is just a fancy word for taking basic nitrogen compounds and making bigger things. Like plants will take nitrates and use those nitrates to build all the molecules that it needs to build, like proteins and DNA. It has our decomposers that after the plants die, returns the nitrogen to uh, the soil. And it kind of goes around and around, but this is a little bit confusing to me, so we, we're gonna use this diagram. And in this diagram, essentially, what we have is we have our nitrogen as N2 in the atmosphere. But here's the tough thing about nitrogen, N2. It is two nitrogen com or molecules or atoms connected together. But see that there's three lines here that signify three different bonds. So that's a triple bond. That triple bond is very difficult to break. In fact, it's so difficult. Let me, let me give you an example. It's so difficult to break that 80% of the air that we breathe is nitrogen. But also 80% of our the air that we exhale is also nitrogen, meaning we can't get nitrogen in the form of N2. We don't have anything that can use that nitrogen. We rely on other organisms for our nitrogen source because we can't, we don't have anything that can even break all those triple bonds. So here's where that first fixation comes in. So we have nitrogen fixing bacteria that's going to take the N2 and make different things. So we have ammonia that the nitrogen fixing bacteria would make um, or possibly nitrate or NO3. Then from there, different plants and animals, again through consumption or absorbing, in the case of a plant, the, the plants will absorb the nitrogen uh, through the roots. Uh, they're gonna go ahead and, and make complex organic molecules, okay, just like before, but the thing about it here is now that they're, they contain nitrogen. So these are going to be things like amino acids to make proteins and also uh, nucleic acids, so DNA and RNA going in to make the nucleotides. Much like before, this is where we have this going from the ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and all those things. This is where it's really assimilation, okay? So it's making, it's taking these basic components and making our complex organic nitrogen-containing molecules, our things like amino acids to make proteins and nucleotides for DNA and RNA. Just like before, if all of the nitrogen was stuck in these complex organic molecules, if all of it was stuck in DNA, RNA, and amino acids and proteins, we wouldn't have anything for this nitrogen-fixing bacteria, so our N-fixing bacteria. They wouldn't have any food left. So if they don't have any food, we don't have any ammonia and nitrite for assimilation to happen with our plants. And if we don't have those happen for our plants, we don't have, the animals don't have anything to eat. So again, just like before, we need our decomposers. Again, our fungus and bacteria to come in and take those complex organic nitrogen containing molecules and break them down to return N2 to the atmosphere. So 
our nitrogen fixing bacteria is, is going to take it from the abiotic atmosphere and put it into organisms. Um, sometimes that it will release back into the environment. So it'll go from abiotic to biotic to abiotic again. Uh, plants will absorb those different things, those basic building blocks. So we're going from abiotic to biotic. And then our decomposers will take uh, the nitrogen from these complex biotic portions and return it to the atmosphere into the abiotic portion. So I just want to leave you with a couple of last questions. First one is, what is the connection between photosynthesis and cellular respiration in the water cycle and in the carbon cycle? The next question is, what is the role of decomposers in the carbon cycle and in the nitrogen cycle? We should be able to answer these questions, and if we can't, we probably need to go back and watch the cycle part again, just to make sure that we have everything correct. And those are the cycles. And that is all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.